WSDQ Dunlap, WEPG South Pittsburgh, The Copperhead, WSDT Saudi Daisy, Chattanooga. The viewpoints expressed on Liberty Works Radio Network are not necessarily those of the network, its affiliates, or sponsors. This is Liberty Works Radio Network. Now live from coast to coast and around the globe, more real talk, the kind you want, on Liberty Works Radio Network. Society, Free Enterprise Society is a member of the Truth Attack Coalition also. On this program, I like to expose the truth about subjects that affect American liberty. Your liberty. For those who know me, no income tax is one of my main issues, as it is destroying Americans' desire to be successful. My goal is to eliminate the income tax for everyone. The federal government could get along fine without the income tax if they would only follow the law. When I talk about the law, I mean the U.S. Constitution. The federal government has only 17 powers under law. Everything else is prohibited. If the law were followed, they would not even need 10% of their current budget. Imagine that, a world without the income tax. What a nice place it would be. You can go to freeenterprisesociety.com and get information on what the problem is with the income tax and uh, also what you can do to get rid of it. The the Constitution of the United States that I talked about is the formula that made this country great. The reason I believe we're having problems today now is because we have stopped following the Constitution. In the presidential debates, you see, not only on our guest today, but on... Uh, you know, on CNN, more and more candidates are starting to talk about the Constitution. I wish they actually used it when they got into office. Maybe that will change one of these days. Now, I did mention we're a member of the Truth or Cat Coalition. This is a group of uh, organizations around the country all trying to restore the Constitution, and some of them are trying to get rid of the income tax. This is uh, We have many projects underway there through that coalition. One of these was recently completed as Innocence Revealed. I think you'll find this of interest. You can go to truth-attack.com, and you can also get that at freeenterprisesociety.com. But you can see that video now, at least temporarily, for free, the entire video. It's a document. There's five attorneys and a former IRS agent showing you that the average individual is not even allowed for the income tax. That's probably you, ladies and gentlemen. You're probably not liable and probably never have been liable for the income tax, according to these experts. It's very, very interesting. Excellent. And if, if you are one of those people filing returns, I think you owe it to yourself to at least look at this before you file your next return, because uh, they're using that money to hurt us, as far as I can see. Now, progressivism. That's in the elections. You'll see uh, some candidates talk about how progressive they are. Progressive is just a new term for communism. Sounds like a good word. It's based on the word progress. Progress is a, supposed to be a good term, but progressivism is communism. If you hear a candidate talk about that, he either, he either is promoting communist ideas or he doesn't know what the term means. Either one is bad for that candidate. Now, we're going to talk about more than just income tax today, and we're going to talk about that with my guest today, Justin Witter. He's a presidential candidate on the Constitution Party. Now, welcome, Justin. It's a pleasure to have you join me. Oh, the honor's all mine. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, you made a little note here that you have, you believe in one nation that must adhere to the supreme law of the land, U.S. Constitution, created to secure our rights, our limited government, not limiting we the people. And uh, well, that's a good statement. And, of course, you're running on the Constitution Party, and uh, which believes in the Constitution, the United States Constitution, that is. I think some of the elected officials we have today, uh, they talk about the Constitution sometimes, but I'm not sure which one they read. Uh, they may have read the Constitution of Cuba. <laughs> Because right. they're not reading the same one I read. Hmm. Oh yeah, they're they're definitely in uh, left field. Um, you know, it seems like we're uh, the only constitutions that we're enforcing are the country's constitutions that we're you know place our troops on. You know, we protect their borders and we ignore our constitution our our borders here. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Well, why, uh, let us know a little bit why you're running for president. That's not an easy job to do, just easy just even to run for office. So uh, tell us uh, maybe uh, briefly how why you're involved with that. Well, uh, anybody who's been uh, breathing for like the last century knows that our country's been going downhill. We have less freedom, more taxes, more wars, uh, and we don't seem to be getting anything out of it um, and except debt and uh, a lot of angry people, uh, you know, 
corners, what have you. But, uh, you know, I see, you know, the rhetoric of uh, the right and the left, and it just seems like we're, they're on the same page, you know, more debt, more war. Um, it kind of saddens me, you know, uh, listening to the debates. No one's like, hey, you know, maybe we should take care of our own borders. You know, it's kind of scary to hear the rhetoric of uh, uh, certain individuals in the GOP that are front runners, and it, it just seems like we're putting our soldiers in harm's way, and and just leaving ourselves defenseless here. It's we have so many problems in this country. Like you said, we just need to go back to the Constitution and fix most of the problems. Uh, most of the problems are the that we have are because we're not obeying the Constitution and we're divided almost on every single subject there is, uh, in every law, unconstitutional and fixed well. Well, it's pretty if, – for, for, for people that read the Constitution, it's pretty easy to see that. I see you want to end the income tax. I, I am a big supporter of that, to pr- promote small businesses and families. That's what that would do. I mean, I live in California. You're in Idaho, which is a much more – probably a much more friendly state to the people than California is. California is just brutal. It is destroying businesses. Uh, somewhere around 1,000 a month are leaving, closing down or indoor leaving because of the rules and, and the regulations they're putting on business here. So your goal is to uh, lift a lot of that. Right. You know, I was listening to you earlier, and you were talking about, you know, we all, the federal government only needs like 10% of what they take in. They're, they're live, uh, you know, constitutionally of what they're actually supposed to be doing. Um, you know, and the thing is, is we could solve a lot of our problems, you know, if we just got our government out of it. I mean, uh, it, it's kind of hard to tie 10% to your church. You know, who used to be responsible uh the universities and every good thing almost we have in the country, a lot of those churches, we can't tie it anymore because you're paying, you know, out the neck in taxes. It seems like our government comes, you know, the new God. And I I think we need to get back to, uh, you know, what made our country great, you know, and that's God and our Constitution. Well, I agree with that. Uh, the, the federal government messes things up, to see, from my point of view, when they get involved. We have... Um, uh, they they apparently can't pay for veterans health care, but they they don't they don't they're short of money there. But they're not seem to be short of money on on uh, educating people who don't even belong here, for example, and the and uh, which kind of kind of uh, irritates me. We don't really see and don't have much control over the budgets. But if you look at them, they never they just don't even try to stay in the budgets much anymore, especially with this uh, latest. I mean, Bush was bad enough, but uh, Obama's is off the rails when it comes to budgeting, or not budgeting. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, they get they get uh, you know uh, free money basically from the Federal Reserve. Uh, well, it's not free, but uh, you know they get all the money they want because Federal Reserve doesn't care. Um, you know, so and that's another thing: getting rid of the Federal Reserve. You know, they're the main problem. You know, I don't I don't trust anybody who's printing the currency and charging much interest. You know, we need to go back to the Constitution and have, uh, you know, Congress use a treasury or what have they to, you know, coin the silver and gold uh, currency again to have our, you know, people's currency once again. Uh, that's also what made our, our nation strong is we didn't have central banks. You know, we handed them twice. Um, it, it's got to happen again soon because uh, people are starting to catch on, uh, you know, to the pyramid scheme that's going on. Eventually the bubble's going to burst when it happens. You know, we're not going to like it. And that's one of the reasons I'm running is we need to – it just seems like uh, we're not taking control of our own destiny. We're going to have some major problems in this country, but, you know, we need to uh, be the destiny of how that happens. I don't really want to be in control of our destiny. Because uh, some bad times are coming, and I'd rather have our troops on our borders, you know, rather than the U.S. Uh, There's a lot of problems with these central banks. Well, the federal, the national debt is the big issue. I mean, we're getting to the point where uh, uh, half of what we collect seems to go to the debt anymore, and that's going to just grow exponentially out of control, which is, uh, apparently is now. Uh, but you're talking about Article One, uh, Section Eight of the Constitution. The Congress should be coining the money, and uh, you know, in fact, the Constitution does, does that even mention the Federal Reserve System? The no. 
Yeah, a lot of people think it's a part of the federal government, you see. And if you read the Constitution, those words aren't in there. Congress has this authority. And I don't necessarily see, and uh, you may agree with that, that the Congress, I don't know where the Congress necessarily has the authority just to give that to some private company that not only works here, but also apparently works in other countries. Right. And the fact that it's foreign and that we can't even audit it without you know, somebody's kicking a screen up is just... It's it's not federal and that's not a reserve, you know, because they only keep what ninety percent uh, or ten percent uh, held back, and then they take the ninety percent, do whatever they want to, throwing in stock market or corporations or what have you, or other banks, and uh, it's just got to stop. I mean, we don't benefit from a federal reserve at all. You know, federal reserve is just one giant leech uh, on our nation, and it, it needs to be removed, like Andrew Jackson. Well, yes, Andrew Jackson got rid of central banking once before, and it was uh, very beneficial uh, to our country. And uh, yeah, he also it is ended, back now. I think he was the first president to end our debt, too. Uh, to just, uh, uh, so I don't think we had any more debt at one point. Well, we didn't have a whole lot of debt for a long, you know, until really until the 60s or so. Uh but and through wars we had some debt, but now if the Federal Reserve weren't printing our money, when we had the United States Congress printing, you know, the our Treasury Department creating the money, we didn't borrow it into circulation with interest at that time, and uh, so that that was a lot different situation. Now, you know, there is a debt to the Federal Reserve, and it seems to me that people are worried about that. Even getting rid of the Federal Reserve, they'd worry about the debt to the Federal Reserve, and I. I kind of would think that they want once we, you know, since Congress created them, they can uncreate them, and when they uncreate them, the debt goes away. When we would not owe a Federal Reserve that no longer exists anything. <laughs> I completely agree. I believe the debt's actually unconstitutional and uh, not valid. It, it can just kind of be written off as uh, uh, null and void. Well, we're going to agree on that one again. The Federal Reserve, uh, you know, is, is tied heavily to the income, in income tax as well. And you talked about the gold and silver clause of the Constitution. I mean, they, even Lincoln and uh, where Kennedy he came out with the United States notes. I mean, it was, you know, at least when the United States printed the notes, there was no interest on those notes. And they were redeemable, you know, for a long time in gold and silver. People liked the paper, the convenience of it. So. Well, you got some other things here. Uh, the Patriot Act, you're right. not too keen on it, looks like. Yeah, I don't like being spied on and uh, people seeing what I'm reading and what have you. i got a private life. This is America, the same China. It's got to go. Well, there's a book, big push on losing the First Amendment. You probably are aware of that. And even with this more recent attack in San Bernardino, again, they say, well, we should, you know, your privacy shouldn't count. We should, you know, be able to go, you know, circumvent it. And I don't agree with that either. I mean, they they talked about the NSA spying being terminated, but hey, that was just I was barely done, and that was done. They was you know, that wouldn't have made any difference on the San Bernardino. That was still active until very very recently, and uh, I don't, you know, it makes me nervous to have the government watching me all the time, and. Uh, I think they can do a lot better than uh, wait, you know, get rid of the Constitution. Anyway, for me, if we get rid of the Constitution and our rights, then we don't have a country to fight for. It seems to me. <laughs> uh, makes sense to me. I mean, it's worth fighting for. That's you know, our constitutions, uh, what our soldiers take an oath to, and uh, you know, to enforce the law, you know, is uh, is to honor them, you know, for sacrificing. Uh, for us, so that we can have these limitations on our government. You know, it's a beautiful thing that we have a supreme law like that. Uh, it, it's something to brag about. It, it's something uh, when, when somebody is uh, an enemy of the Constitution domestically, you know, it needs to be taken care of. You know, we can't just let these people. These people just are outright with it. I mean, these uh, these treasonous people—they they're out of the well. closet. That bad. There's the music. Uh, there's the music, Justin. I gotta interrupt you there a second. You're listening to the Truth Attack Hour on Liberty Works Radio Network. We're talking with Justin Witter, presidential candidate for the Constitution Party, 
Uh, stay tuned for more after this break. Welcome back to the Truth Attack Hour. I am Steve Heffling, Director of Free Enterprise Society. Truth Attack Hour is aired every day from 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific Time on Liberty Works Radio Network. I do want to mention the importance of Liberty Works. I believe that this network and networks like it are going to be the new mainstream media. The mainstream media we consider today is just... Uh, you know, at a low, you know, people do not really watch it. The number of people watching CNN is dropping like a rock, and most of the other news programs as well. And more and more listeners are going to programs and networks like this. So, if you enjoy this program or others on this network, I hope that you can uh, look on the LWRN.net. So you can leave a one-time donation or set up a monthly donation. This is a listener-supported network. So, and uh, so, hopefully, you can help out and keep this network. Growing. Going on the air. Now you may want to write this number down. It's four one zero eight four eight nine one nine one. That's four one zero eight four eight nine one nine one. You're welcome to call in with questions or comments from my guest. We're back with my guest, Justin Witter. He's presidential candidate for the Constitution Party. And uh, uh, Justin, before I get back to you, I do want to, for those that are listening from my email, I you know you mentioned I spelled your name wrong there, so I do want to know that uh, that has been corrected. Uh, for those listening, this is uh, uh, Justin. Uh, uh, you are from Idaho, there, correct? No, I'm from Iowa, the caucus state. Iowa, okay, okay. Not from the great state, uh, socialist state of California. That's good. <laughs> right. Oh okay. yeah, Iowa's great. Um, Well, no, it's a good. Uh, it's a good state. Those, those central states are a lot smarter than the states along the ocean. I noticed, uh, particularly California, New York, maybe. <laughs> and we got more liberals out here. We know what to do with it, and I don't really understand it either. When uh, uh, so, uh, but California has its own set of problems. Now, back to your platform here. You're talking about. Uh, let's see. Doing the uh, see Patriot Act N N D double N D A A the A T F F B I C I A uh, you're not you're not enamored with them it doesn't look like what are your what's your proposal there? Well, they're unconstitutional. We uh, we've had a country longer than uh, those existed, so I think we can figure it out and uh, let's we'll restart it. Um, there has to be a transitional phase. Uh, in between, you know, I'm up for all. Of, uh, you know, I don't have every single answer, but I'm sure a lot of like-minded folks can come together and figure that out and transition uh, and where we're going to. But I think those uh, organizations are unconstitutional for the most part, um, and it just need to be restructured uh, back so that the at least Congress is uh, more in control uh, in the states. Uh, I just don't like having. It's, it's like the CIA. It's, it's, you never know what it's doing. Uh, most of these organizations just cause trouble in our efforts. Yeah, well, the FBI is heavily involved with the, uh, you know, the in intelligence here now, and the it's not really an intelligence agency, so it's kind of at a disadvantage. It looks like uh, it's an investigative agency. Uh, Although they are, you know, they, I think the, part of the problem there is they just work too closely with the president. Right. So you want to uh, get rid of them and, and change something around where people have a lot more transparency, maybe, and more. Right. Control. I don't. It's been kind of said that the CIA is kind of like the, you know, the president's kind of a secret army or a, you know, or special, you know, own army, you know, kind of outside of everybody. And I don't think the president should have that much power. I think. Uh, I don't. I don't. Okay. Um, let's see. Place. Uh, you want to use our our military, our troops on the on our borders here? Right. Um, right. I don't believe we're serving our best interests by being over there. I think we're serving uh, corporate interests. 
uh, whether it's pipelines or what have you. Um, I think we need to bring our troops home and start worrying about our borders since ours are wide open. You know, uh, got, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, and then they're talking about immigration, you know, halting Muslim immigration. I'm for actually ending all immigration right now until our whole, own house is in order. Um, it, it doesn't make any sense why we're enforcing other people's constitutions and borders and not others. So I'd love our soldiers back home uh, where they belong, sending our borders. Well, there's a lot of people that believe that. You got 90%, you want to bring 90% of the military bases back to the U.S. Now, what's your uh, position on uh, friendly? You know, there's one thing like when we're in a country that doesn't want us there, or base, or, or something like we're Germany, where they we're in there as a friendly. Um, exactly. It, it's around 90%. There. It's just to, to figure out uh, most of our bases we don't need. Uh, a lot of people don't want us there, but for strategic reasons, for you know, friendly reasons, you know, I can understand, but I don't like all these military alliances that we've got. Um, you know, I, I kind of believe that uh, George Washington's foreign policy, you know, friends with all, you know, trade with all, uh, you know, offer everyone, pre- uh, offer everyone peace and friendship. And it's kind of hard to do that when we're all, when everyone's neighborhood. Uh, and if you're a lot more friendlier uh, economic uh, uh, relationship with other countries, um, and all these uh, treaties like uh, NAFTA and all that, I want all those gone. That's that's not a free market. I believe those are all controlled by you know people that write those bills, you know, corporations and banks. Um, I want us to be in charge of our own uh, economy as well, uh, free market economy. Uh, however, the states uh, want to do it. I just want to get a lot of that out of the uh, uh, get rid of the Fed and also out of the federal government's control. Uh, a lot of their organizations as well, uh, like the Department of Labor, things of that nature can go. Go ahead. Well, President Reagan wanted to get rid of the Department of Education. That was one of his platforms, and uh, he tried to do it, and Congress would not cooperate with him. So uh, it was unfortunate because uh, today, yeah, they're putting out uh, things such as Common Core. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, it's uh, sponsored by the U.N., um, and, and that's the thing is you let the federal government in, and, you know, it's always like, oh, the government, federal government's going to do this and that. Yeah, they do it. And now they're inviting foreigners, like, you know, uh, to, to control our education, too, because the, the U.N. is just a foreign organization as, as far as I'm concerned. Um, we didn't elect these people. They have no say. But because we give them this much, you know, we give them an inch and they take a mile, and that's what they always do. That's why we have limitations on them. And I definitely got to get rid of the Department of Education. Uh, you know, our test scores, it just seems like our kids are, are not getting the education they should. Um, so I, I don't totally agree with that. Well, I, yeah, but I, what I looked at on Common Cars is definitely a step backwards to me, and, and uh, it's 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 also anti-American, many many parts of it. Even though it's not political, it's a reading, writing, and arithmetic, but the, the problems themselves are very political, anti-American. And uh, now, um, what else? Uh, Obamacare. What do you think of that? Yeah, I don't really want the federal government involved in uh, the health of the nation. Uh, ridiculous. They, they they always include corporations. You know, they want to throw vaccines at you, mandatory. Uh, uh, it's just, and you can't afford it. Back in the days, we used to have better health care. It wasn't all pharmaceuticals. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of getting rid of the FDA. I don't, I don't like all these pharmaceuticals because I realize what it is. Um, you know, pharmacia uh, is the root word Greek uh, in the New Testament for sorcery. Is what we call it today. Uh, pharmacist, pharm- uh, pharmacy, and that's a big problem. We got all these. Uh, uh, you know, they're using them like uh, legal drugs because you're not prescribing them, but these things are horrible. Uh, so they're <laughs> not a fan of the FDA. Well, they put a lot of red tape on I mean, you see pills that people are trying to take. They're $500 a pill, and they need two of them a day or whatever. Uh, that's incredible uh, to me. 
And uh, right. I think I think that's government regulatory issues that cause those kind of costs in part or in probably in full. And there's a lot of times, you know, we have uh, things that we can use and they ban because corporations don't want to lose money. Um, you know, there's a lot of use, like corn, for instance, being here in Iowa has multi-uses, almost in everything at the grocery store, uh, all sorts of products like, a, you know, DuPont and what have you. Now, I'm also a proponent of, uh, you know, uh, the industrialization of hemp. Um, you know, we used to have a slogan back in World War II, hemp for victory, because it's so important. You know, today we realize that it has so many uses, almost more than corn. Uh, it can even be used for food and what have you. You can use it for fuel. You know, uh, it practically put DuPont out of business, for the most part, a lot of the things that do and all other corporations. Uh, things like that would open up our economy, uh, get rid of these useless corporations that are just basically leeches and, uh, you know, in my opinion, poisoning us. Uh, but things like that I'm open to. You know, I believe in the liberty to... Uh, of our economy and the free market, and government's just in the way and causes more problems. So. Right. Well, the drug the drug war has been unsuccessful. Period. And in the you're right. In the event of uh, hemp, it uh, it was a beneficial product that was grown by the farmers, probably in your area, years ago. Right. And. Uh, no, they. I'm. Fr- I was from Northern Ohio. They they grew it there, but uh, that was before before I was around, pretty much. But still, still grows wild there. But I don't think that would be anything that any of the kids would be interested in. Stuff so, uh, <laughs> uh, for the marijuana and the smoking, I suppose. But the thing is, what's why is the government involved? Is what you're saying? And uh, uh, as far as the, the drug war. Yeah. Oh well, it's just uh, it's just another problem that they can cause. I mean, it's just like prohibition. You know, they said, uh, so you can't drink alcohol anymore. So obviously, that creates a vacuum for criminals that are going to do it anyway. Uh, so you create a criminal class, um, build more prisons. You know, that's how the prison industrial complex got built up. You know, especially with the drug war. Um, and then they, oh, well, we we got a, a problem here. We need the FBI. So there we get the FBI. You know, and then they end it, and, you know, the gangsters kind of, you know, they pretty much, for the most part, go away. And then you introduce the drug war, you know, intensify it in the 80s, and then you get all these gangsters on the street shooting each other over it because, the, you know, that's the vacuum that the government created. Oh, well, we got a problem, so, you know, we got to clamp down. Uh, three strikes are out, uh, do all these things, throw people in prison. We got more people in prison than most of the world combined, practically. Uh, but like two-thirds of the world's prison population, we're the home of the free. Uh, it doesn't make any, or the land of free, doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, it really bothers me. I mean, you know, proclaim, proclaim liberty, you know, freedom throughout the land. You know, I believe that's on the Liberty Bell, uh, biblical. You know, we need to do that again and go back to our roots. You know, this is a Christian nation. You know, if we uh, you know live by the golden rule, you know, and limit our, uh, you know, how we limit ourselves when we treat each other, how we treat each other, so that's what the Constitution is built off, is limitations on the government. Is that I don't want you doing this to me, so we don't want our government doing it either. And it's just overall, I mean, everything the government pretty much does, it's not supposed to be doing. And what it's supposed to be doing, it doesn't, it, it won't even touch. And when you say, hey, that's not, why are you doing this? I'm like, oh, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's just a big farce, and uh, I think, you know, that's pretty much why I'm running. I'm just tired of it all. I want to control my daughter's future, and I don't see anybody up on stage or anybody talking about the things that I'm talking about, that, you know, America first, you know, and, and I'm really serious about it, and that's why I chose the Constitution Party, because I don't like politics, left or right, you know, because, you know, I'm awake. I understand what's going on. You know, it's principles before politics, and uh, we need to get back to well, there's the music, Justin. Hang on a second. You're listening to the Truth Attack Hour on Liberty Works Radio Network. We're talking with Justin Witter, presidential candidate for the Constitution Party. We'll be back after this break.
Welcome back to the Truth Attack Hour. I am Steve Hefling, Director of Free Enterprise Society. Truth Attack Hour is aired every day from 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific Time on Liberty Works Radio Network. Now, you may want to write this number down. It is a call-in number. It's 410-848-9191. That's 410-848-9191. You're welcome to call in with questions or comments for my guest today. Uh, my guest is uh, Justin Witter. He's the presidential candidate for the Constitution Party. And before break, you were talking about prohibition and the war on drugs. I think you make a very good point because... Uh, uh, the government became more powerful, and the crime syndicates became more powerful under prohibition, and the people were were destroyed from both sides. And that's happening with the drug drug laws as well. Uh, the government becomes more powerful to fight it. They say they need more money and uh, and all this, and the and the drug lords become more powerful as well. They're down with guns and uh, that match the police or beat you know are more powerful than the law enforcement, and they're down at the schoolyards and everything else only because it's a lot of money involved. And the people are, again, in the middle, getting hurt from both sides. So I think that's a, a good good place to go uh, to get rid of those things. Oh, so they also are you talking about the ad with... council? Go ahead. Oh, well, I was going to add a quick note. You know, it also uh, violates the First Amendment of your, you know, your religion, too, because, you know, Jesus Christ, you know, said it's, it's not what... Uh, uh, what you put into your body, you know, what goes uh, in your mouth and to your stomach that defiles you, you know, it's what comes out of your mouth, you know, from your heart that defiles you. You know, so I see a lot of judgment with that as far as religion where we have to do, uh, eat, and have whatever the government says. I'm not advocating drug use, but I'm just saying that, you know, in America, you're free to fail and you're free to succeed. And that's what makes America great. That's the American dream of liberty. Um, and so I'm highly against uh, uh, government intervention, people's personal, individual lives. But I mean, that was what I want. No, that's good. All right, you are talking about uh, wars being approved by Congress as well. That's something that uh, concerns you. So tell us about that. Yeah, we just uh, – I don't believe we have a constitutional uh, war that was approved by Congress you know, since World War II. Um, we go uh, to all these countries and we create all these problems, and then we then we're expected to take in all the refugees too. I mean, we have all these freedom fighters and refugees for all these last decades that are pouring into our country. Um, you know, and that's that's not good for all those families either. And they're just unconstitutional, and it's all uh, banker wars anyway, in my opinion. It just needs to be stopped. Uh, we need to focus on our country first. Well, Congress, what what did they do here? They gave the president more power to send his soldiers into combat without declaring war. Uh, what's where's the what's the constitutional authority for that? You see, uh, I can't find any. Yeah, I can't either. The the president has way too much power. Uh, that's why we have checks and balances. You know, so for Congress to give power to a, another branch uh, just shows you the. Uh, the corruption, um, just giving away um, the law, the Constitution, just chopping it off bit by bit, you know, and then it's in concert. Um, well, the federal government is now just, it's not really three branches, it's basically one, uh, in my opinion. Um, it, they're all in sync, and they're helping each other, and they just just get, gain more federal power. And uh, anything we can do to get uh, those rights and powers back to the people and uh, into the state, uh, I'm all for. Yes, a lot of people consider the Supreme Court as, uh, you know, almost like a god when they are done. I mean, all it is is an opinion of a few men or women. Uh, they could be wrong, and I, in my opinion, they're wrong far too often. <laughs> right, and that's another thing, you know, the Supreme Court, uh, you know, as far as gay marriage and stuff, I'm for the fact that the federal government has nothing to do with marriage whatsoever. You know, so uh, my administration would say, hey, you know, that's none of our business. You know, just because the Constitution says it's none of our business. Um, it, you know, they, they, because what they do well, is besides they that, it's pretty arrogant. Religion. It's pretty arrogant to take a term used for 
thousands or maybe tens of thousands of years and sit there and redefine it. Like, what did we ever do without uh, the federal government, huh? Thousands of years ago. Boy. Just and then they, uh, get along, then they push, I uh, push all these things through the ad council, too. That's why I put that down to get rid of that. I'm um, getting really tired of the federal government telling us how to live, what to eat, how to raise our kids, what tell your kids what to think. Um, if this happens, do this. And, you know, just taking over our education and just acting like they're the parents. And uh, the, they, they need to, uh, we need to draw a line again. Uh, they're getting way too involved in our families, uh, destroying families. And that's, in my opinion, that's their main goal, is to have us completely divided, even in our home, uh, which really angers a lot of Americans. Well, some of the questionnaires of the grade school students are there asking questions behind the parents' backs about guns and different things going on in the home. And uh, I'm very disturbed by that. But uh, with the Ad Council, uh, I'm not even real, I actually never looked that up. What uh, what is that exactly? Well, if you ever listen to AM radio, um, they always have uh, these commercials brought to you by such and such organization and the Ad Council. They always say, and the Ad Council, uh, just telling you, you know, just basically anything about life, what you should do, what you should eat, what's good for you, what's bad for you. Well, yeah, I've heard that. So it needs to go. We have no need for the government telling us how to live our lives. Okay. All right. Uh, you're you're in favor of uh, you know friendly foreign commerce, doing business with other countries. So you're not right, in isolation yet, currently. Sorry. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I didn't catch the last thing you said. I apologize. Oh, um, you're maintaining uh, friendly foreign commerce. Looks like you're in favor of that. Yes. <laughs> I think we should trade with all nations. There's no reason not to, um, you know, unless we're trying to do things. Generally, if we're not trading with a nation, uh, because we're in some sort of uh, military alliance or economic alliance against them, you know, or usually for no reason whatsoever, but corporate, uh, which has nothing really to do with our you know, our government, but shouldn't. Now you, you are not you're not a politician. I take it you're not a, you're not an elected official yourself. No, I'm not. Um, I really don't want anything to do with. Uh, I, I hate politics. I see, you know, I see what's done to our country, uh, media, every facet. Um, that's that's why I joined the Constitution Party. Um, I've always been uh, aware of what's going on. Um, I guess you know, my dad was uh, a councilman when I was younger. I never, I was young, so I don't really remember a lot of it. But maybe it's in my blood you know, to kind of speak out. Uh, um, but no, it's, I, I was kind of pushed into politics as far as, you know, uh, or running for president because of, uh, you know, from local to federal laws that uh, ignore our rights and the Constitution as well. Um, and I, I just think we need somebody honest in there, somebody to relate to, and somebody that uh, cares enough about their rights as they're fighting for their own. Well, people that are not politicians seem to be very popular right now. They're, they're, you're not the only one sick of politicians. And, uh, you know, the Republicans promised lots of things when they took over the House and the Senate, and they did nothing, it looks like to me. And uh, the Democrats aren't doing nothing, but they're doing bad things. <laughs> right. uh, I'm all anyway. for, uh, you know, getting these people in jail, you know, arresting these people. I I think we should arrest, uh, you know, if I went into office in January 2017, one of the first things I'll do is uh, make sure that we arrest uh, Bush and Obama for treason. Um, I, I think that needs to be done to set an example for the rest of the politicians. And I think a lot are, you know, in Congress, and a lot of them need to be arrested as well. Um, you know, I, I'm really, just like the rest of the country, I don't understand how uh, politicians can... Uh, just go out there and say, oh, we want to take your guns. 
and not be arrested. I mean, to me, that's aiding and uh, uh, comforting the enemy by taking our weapons and going against the Constitution. I, I believe that's high treason, and he's dealt with immediately. I don't understand why no one else is addressing that. He's well, I don't think, I think there are a lot of people thinking about those things, but, uh, you know, who really takes care of the president? The t- attorney general is an appointee of the president. He's a, he's there to protect the president. He's not really a true law enforcement officer in that sense, uh, independent. Well, before we go any further, we're almost out of time. I've got five minutes left. I want to make sure if, if people are interested in talking with you more or... or, or uh, Helping you out if they can, or learning more, and uh, maybe come and see in one of your meetings or something. Uh, how do they, how do people get a hold of you? Um, on Facebook, uh, your search for Justin Witter. Um, I'm also on Twitter as well. Um, uh, Justin Paul Witter at Justin P Witter, and uh, my main account uh, Justin Paul Witter at Witter Board Four. Or excuse me, the number. So it's Witter the number four. Prez, P-R-E-S, 2016. Okay. All right, we got that out of the way. And, uh, you know, what what bothers me about these presidential elections is the, you know, these, these uh, other than the two main parties, the other parties don't get a lot of airtime on these major networks. And it seems to me that uh, it would be, a lot better if if you qualify for president, you get the signatures and you get on the ballot. Uh, you know you should be included in some of these uh, these uh, this airtime that the other candidates get. So that's something that's a whole other subject. <laughs> but but uh, the Constitution Party has a disadvantage there, along with the Libertarians, and they they're not just they're just uh, not on the big uh, big screens here too much. So. But I think their message is uh, a lot better than what we see. I mean, that uh, particularly the Democratic uh, uh, debate was, you know, how much can we give away? I just, we just, everybody thought, oh, God, give me, give you this, give you that. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. You know, I guess a lot of people don't really understand where money comes from. You know, what taxes are. You know, they, they think it's. I guess they think these things are really free. <laughs> and. Uh, but the truth is they pay ten times more than they would if they just did it themselves. Exactly. All right. Well, let's see what well, we hey, got. I'd like here. to Veterans. say one thing before we go. Uh, I'd like to, you know, thank yes. uh, John Kopmeyer for uh, – John. I'd like to thank John Kopmeyer for, you know, having me out uh, with the show. Uh, really nice man. I'm glad he, he found the radio network. Uh, so kudos to uh, Mr. Kopmeyer. Well, he works hard keeping this network alive, and his work with Save a Patriot, which is uh, one of the oldest organizations in the country that's a freedom-loving, pro-constitutional group. And a lot of people even haven't even heard of them, but they're very, very important. Yes. Um, Veterans Administration, you got that on your list of things that you're concerned with. You would want to uh, prop that up, or what are you planning on doing there? I, I think it needs to be uh, restructured to the state level or local level, uh, however the states want to do it, but I, it just needs to be on the federal government's hand. Uh, they waste uh, a lot of money at the federal level. It's just big bureaucracy. And it's better handled uh, locally where you can contact somebody locally about your health problems instead of having to work through a, you know, like I said, the bureaucracy. But I'd like to double funding. And if you bring that to the states or down to an individual level, you'll have twice the amount of uh, money available instead of bureaucracy. So you have about four times much more uh, devoted to it. But okay, well, there's the music, Justin. I got to interrupt you there. Thanks for joining me. It's a good program. Thank all of you for listening to the Truth Attack Hour. I'll be hosting this program on Wednesdays. Also, check out truth-attack.com and freeenterprisesociety.com for the problems with the income tax and abolishing it. <laughs> 